Welcome back to It's Your Law. I'm George Curtis, and about six weeks ago, uh, Professor Courtney Bowder, I believe is his name, at the University of Wisconsin Oshkosh, who teaches a great course, introduced me to Henry Goldie, and uh, my wife and I just uh, uh, were riveted. We, we weren't ready to leave when the speech was over, and we bought a book from Henry and it is an amazing book. It should be in your home. It should be something that you make sure that your children read and their children read. It's called Rag Dolls. Where did you come up with that name, Henry? Well, uh, that's very interesting. Uh, why I called it Rag Dolls. You see, this was a time in one of the concentration camps they were going to uh, uh, evacuated the camp because the Russian front was moving towards us. And uh, one day the German commandant came to talk to us and told us that the camp is going to be evacuated to a different part of Poland. And uh, he told us that the strong people are going to go on foot and weak ones going to go on a train. And we had to go in front of him and uh, he was making some kind of marks in front of our names and numbers. We didn't know what he was doing. But the next day he come back and he brought all these guards with him and they brought in a couple of trucks and uh, chased everybody out in, into the camp's ground uh, place. And uh, he told us that the names that he was going to call those are the people that are going to go on a train. And he started calling names. And when he had 25 people, right away, they load them on a truck, and out of the camp gate they would go. When I've seen the people that he was taking, I figured they're not going to go very far. They're most probably going to take him into the forest and shoot him, because those were weak ones and sickly looking ones and so on. And more people felt the same way as I did because when he called the names, they wouldn't show up. But he wasn't waiting for them to show up. He was just calling more names. And then I heard my name called. And I stood there. And I forget, he's not going to end there. He's going to do something else. I have to hide. But where do you hide? Inside the barrack, they will find you. Outside the barrack, they'll find you too. And then it dawned on me, there's a hospital barrack right in the corner of the camp. If somebody would die, they would take the body and throw it behind the barracks. And when there was a big pile of bodies there, they would come, load them on a truck, take them into the forest and bury them. I figured that day they never gonna look there. And I start circling around the camp. There was a lot of chaos going on until I found myself behind that hospital barrack. And I looked. And sure enough, there was a big pile of bodies there. And I lay down on top of the bodies, and I stayed the whole day. And I was fighting with myself. At first, I would be thinking, well, there's nothing to worry about. They can't hurt you. They're dead. They're nothing but ragdolls. And then the next moment, I would become remorseful. And I thought to myself, my God, what am I doing here? Those people could have been alive yesterday. They had families, they had names. What am I doing here? Back and forth like that. And uh, I stayed there. And I heard all kinds of shots being fired in camp and screaming going on right through the day. And I stayed there. And towards the end of the day, when it quietened down, I got up. And to my dismay, I noticed half of the camp was gone. And the survivors were telling stories how they were taking people indiscriminately. If somebody didn't want to go, they shot them on the spot. And so you saved your life that one time, one yes. among many times, by laying down with corpses and pretending to be a corpse yes. for that particular yes. day. Yes. Well, that's, that's a startling name. But let's find out how people can get this book. I have one. Frankly, I intend to get more for my family for a gift occasion that's coming up. Uh, uh, how do people find out where to order one? Uh, is there a number or an address? Yes, there's an address in the back of the book. And uh, my, uh, if they call me or, or write to me, I'll send them the book. Uh, 
the price, including shipping and and uh, handling, is seventeen fifty five. And uh, my name is Henry Goldie, G O L D E, twenty eleven Regency Court, Appleton, Wisconsin, five four nine one five. Is there a phone number you can give us? Yes, it's uh, area code nine two zero eight three two. 1092. Well, Ron Bullock, who's the producer of this show, will make sure that shows up a couple of times uh, on this particular show so that you'll be getting some calls. I hope you've got lots of books. How many years has this book been in print? Since 2002. And how many have been sold? I sold already 13,000 books. In reading the book, my emotions would go from anger uh, to sadness to despair uh, and it is captured so first person yet you were writing it as if you were a teenager weren't you yes you see i wanted to capture the, the i wanted to write the book through the eyes of a 11 year old not an old man which i am today uh, and I think I captured that because I use plain language so children can read it and understand that. Well, I felt in reading the book, Henry, that I was a Jew. Mm -hmm. uh, and even though I don't, I don't have the sophistication, the experience, or the suffering to feel that a Jew is any different than anybody else. Right. It's just one group of people. But yet you wove in how they were treating some other groups, like the gypsies. Yes. Uh, and uh, it, it just made me feel, what, what kind of hate can motivate one group of people to do this to another group of people? Uh, you captured that. You captured that so beautifully. Well, I... Uh, I think I did. You know, uh, the thing is, I'm speaking in schools uh, to students not because I want them to feel sorry for me or sorry for the people that died. They can't help them anymore. I go there to illustrate what one human being is capable of doing to another. As far as I'm concerned, the young people are the, our new generation and pretty soon they're going to go into this world uh, on their own and become future leaders. And they can make a difference. And if they will only remember any part of the story that I just told them, they'll never allow it to happen again. Because as far as I'm concerned, another Holocaust can happen to anybody at any time, anywhere in this world. Well, and I think that warning was clear in the book that uh, these people in Germany weren't stupid. No. It, that was a country uh, with a good educational system, and um, yet somehow their leadership beat them into a frenzy, got them to blame everything that wasn't the way they wanted it in their lives yes. on another group and so that the people on the street were buying that hook, line, and sinker and thought that Jews were, were dirty, were dishonest, That's right. were inferior. And if that can happen then, it can happen again uh, if, if we aren't uh, just resilient about it and look for the danger signs. That's right. Let's take another break, and when we come back, uh, there are some things that stick in my mind about that book I can't get out of it. Yeah. Uh, for okay. example, what it's like to wear a yellow patch every day in your life. When we come back, Henry, I'm going to start with that subject, all right? Okay. <laughs> 